Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And in this video, what I want to do is talk about how to use um, other languages with Jupyter Notebooks. So essentially the idea is that when you install Jupyter Notebook, you're generally going to do that through Python. So to install Jupyter Notebook, you, which again, what Jupyter Notebook, it's basically kind of like this application where it creates like this sort of page and you can just write code, kind of like a REPL, except not in your terminal and you get like this visual output. So I can be like, hey, five plus five, and then I can right click on the cell. Actually, I just uh, run cell there. Well, I think you just hit the play button and see it runs the code. But initially it's just Python code. Okay, so I can import Python libraries and do whatever I wanna do. And that's really cool because this is very awesome for like data analysis because I can pull in all sorts of different data, transform the data, um, you know, and then have it generate a chart and then people can just look at the notebook, change different steps if they want to see the data slightly differently, and the chart just kind of rebuilds itself. And then that can is pretty useful. But wouldn't it be nice to use it with another language that you may like better? Okay, or with or have or had that has libraries that you may rather use. Okay. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about using particularly Scala and JavaScript with Jupyter Notebook. But there are many kernels out there. Uh, for different languages. So you would just look up, you know, Jupyter Lab kernel for R, Jupyter Lab kernel for Go, Jupyter kernel for etc. And then you can do the same thing with that particular language. Um, cool. So first let's talk about installing Jupyter itself. Okay. So essentially what I would do is I would create, you know, install it in a virtual environment with Python. You can either do it using Conda, Mamba, or pip. I'm going to focus on using pip. So you would just first install Jupyter Lab. So it's just pip install Jupyter Lab. And then you can just run Jupyter Lab by just running the command Jupyter Lab. And it will open up the server, which then opens up this little application here. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so basically using a Jupyter notebook is pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, but what about installing the kernels? Okay. Generally, installing the kernels for JavaScript and Scala both involve the same sort of two steps. You install the software that then lets you install the kernel. Okay, so with JavaScript, it's this iJavaScript um, kernel. And essentially, it's pretty straightforward. So when you get to the steps down here, it can seem a little convoluted because it's asking you to download Node. But this is assuming if you already have Jupyter installed from Python, you already have Node.js installed in general, okay, and if not, go install Node.js, um, then you should be you should be fine with just these two last commands. You just install, do a global install on iJavaScript, which just makes the library available globally on your computer, and then do this iJS install command, which then actually creates and puts the little f kernel file in where your Jupyter Notebook is installed, uh, so that way Jupyter, the Jupyter Notebook software can see the kernel. And then there you go. Now when I open up Jupyter Lab, I can see that there's a, a node option. Now for Scala, the best tutorial I've seen is this Geeks for Geeks tutorial made in November 2021. Okay, because there's, there's a couple different kernels out there. There's an almond kernel. Uh, this one is called the Spilon kernel. That was probably the easiest to set up. So all, all I literally had to do is just do pip install Spilon kernel. Okay, in Python. So you can just do that from your from inside your Python environment. And then once you have that, you just run this command to install it. Now, if you're on Linux, th there may be a distinction if you need to install it globally versus the user. So it just depends on how you install Jupyter Lab. So for me, I had installed Jupyter Lab for my user. Okay, I didn't do like a, a hey for every user install. So I had to include a dash dash user flag, which I can't see at the moment because I have the Jupyter Lab server running. Let's see here. I'm going to another terminal. Nope, those are older commands. Uh, yeah, that's from something else. But essentially it was um, this command. So if I want to install it for like, oops, that didn't quite do what I wanted to do. So if I wanted to do this command for like everybody, I would just do like sudo and that would install it in my root directory. But again, I didn't have a Jupyter Notebook directory in there, so it failed because I installed it for my user. 
So what I had to do is at the end here, I had to put dash dash user and then I installed it in the right directory. So just keep that in mind in case you're, you're using Linux. I'm not sure if that'll be relevant if you're using Windows or Mac. Um, but yeah, that's it. And then once I did those two commands, so it's literally just, all I had to do is again, do the pip install spyline kernel and then run the spyline kernel command install command. Then that was it. Then I was able to see this spyline kernel command. Okay, and now I can click on this and now I can use Scala command. So I could be like print line hello world and run the cell. Okay, it's initializing the Scala interpreter. So I'll give it a second. Do, 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 do. Okay, and again. There might be an issue depending on how I installed my Scala interpreter for whether it finds it or not. So we'll see. I do have Scala and Scala 3. Scala, the latest version of Scala 2 and Scala 3 installed. Depending on when you're watching this. Um, right now, essentially, like, this is kind of like diff similar to the transition between like Python 2 and Python 3. There's like significant changes in Scala 3. So generally, most people, so they're still coming out with new versions of 2. And while developing 3, because it's going to take some time for everyone to transition to 3, because three is fairly different. It's actually a lot more Pythonic in the sense where it's a lot less cur necessary curly brackets, a lot more use of indentation, um, and also some really new features that give some clarity to how you write code. I actually really like Scala three quite a bit um, from a syntax point of view and and a feature point and feature set point of view. So um, I'm really hoping people adopt it. Um, but yeah, so I'll take a look into why I like the Scala interpreter for taking so long. But what I'm going to do is maybe create another notebook. So what I will do, so I'll just open this in a new tab. Oh, actually, I already have this in a new tab. So what I'll do here, let's do a new, let's go with new launcher. There we go. Let's try the JavaScript one. Okay, and then I should be able to do like console.log. Hello world. And let's run the cell. And that works like a charm. Okay, so I can now just do JavaScript work in this notebook, which is great, like for teaching, because you can get that immediate feedback. Um, it's great for doing data analysis work or just creating visualizations. So you're not necessarily creating a website, but you just want to create something that someone can interact with to see sort of visualizations of data or other types of inter interactive information. And that's kind of like the purpose of these these notebooks. Okay, I mean, you can also just use them to be doing general programming tasks and just have a nice way to kind of see what your steps are doing. But yeah, so I could essentially do whatever I want to do here. So I could just be like, you know, JSON dot stringify. Hello world. Okay, and then again, basically, since I'm not assigning it to a variable, but this cell should print out what, the, what it returns. And yeah, see, that's what it returns. It returns a JSON string. Okay, good times. Let's take a look at that Scala one. Still initializing the Scala com uh, compiler, so that tells me it's probably not finding my Scala install. So let me see if there's any troubleshooting tips. Let's try running some Scala code. Okay. Let's see if we can find some documentation for the Spylon kernel. There we go. It's probably like another step where I have to tell it like where my my Scala is installed. Type is right, compile for Scala 2.11. You can install the Spylon kernel using Wakanda, using it as a Scala kernel. Good, we did that. Maybe release process. Documentation. That's pretty much it. Okay, let's play with that. There are other um, Scala kernels. The Scala kernel for Jupyter, like Almond. 
Okay, it's just a matter of just, uh, and again, you can just try it out online. So, like, if I go on here online, I can actually try out just a, a working version of it. Do, 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 do. Okay, right. let's go to the launcher. And yeah, so right now you can only do it with Scala 2. Okay, so print line, hello world. Okay, so it looks like there might be some quirks there, but just to kind of demonstrate this Scala use in general, I'll just open up my Scala REPL. Like, I think I'm pretty sure if I just type in Scala, it should open up the REPL. Yep, there we go. And then if I do print line, oops, print line, hello world, and see, it prints out hello world. So you could just use a Scala REPL, it works fine. Um, Oh, it did eventually get there. Just took a second for it to to probably load up the interpreter. But see, there it is. Okay, now what? I'm gonna try again with print line. Print line. Hello world. And yeah, now it's working. Okay, it just probably took a second for the interpreter to run up. Let me just see this. Did this interpreter ever? Uh, no. So that's probably something I have to configure somewhere. But you guys get the idea. Um, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy again. You can try this out with other languages. Just look up the kernels for like whatever language you want to use. There's definitely some for like R and other really popular languages for data like Julia, etc.